Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGPassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, Contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to That Boom Bap. I am your host, Gary Lee, also known as G Hawkins. Of course, you can find me anywhere online, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, at G Hawkins. That's G Hawkins with a Z. And I'm sitting with the lovely, the one, the only, the electrifying, what? Layla E. What up, Layla? How you living? I'm living so good, and I love that intro. You just yeah, put right. life into me on this gloomy day. That's I'm what's up. It. And of course, next to the main man, the the Mr. We running this shit from down south to the east coast. None other than Reem Supreme. Hey. What up? <laughs> what's up, baby? What's good? I'm super good, P. What was you doing? Like a new version of the Eagles? Like, nah, I was just doing my thing. Oh. <laughs> you know, I got a two-step dance and everything. I got a turn, a clap, spin. Okay. All that good shit. All right. right. I haven't seen the two steps. Go get it in. Yo, welcome back from off the beaches. Yeah. Appreciate you. Golden and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Playing Showing James Bond, being Black Bond. Got, what, what, what did he do? Uh, snorkel. Di no, he didn't snorkel. Yeah, he would he, he uh, dive. Feet deep. Yeah, that's snorkeling. No, that's not. Nah, <laughs> he that's would not dive. He had a Scuba snorkel. diving, right? Scuba diving. Yeah, there he would have fucked the right He's just letting us talk <laughs> for right now. Ooh, twiddly, twiddly. What up, Facebook Live? Thank you for checking us out, man. Yo. Yo. Nah, for real, man. It's good to have you back. Hey, bro. man. It's good to be back. I'm just over here making sure the stream is right. Got the modified name. Yeah. So when people yeah. refresh, the shit is correct. Because we got a show for these people, man. We got a respect. Special we've, show. We, we, we've got, you, we do, man. And last one. Yeah, it's the last one of the Close year. The last so one for, of the year. So for yeah. those that are unfamiliar, we like to bring some of the hottest DJs into the building on that boom bath for something mm. special we like to call respect the dj yeah. and because of such we've got someone in the building that's been in the game for almost two decades killing this shit from left to right got the hometown hero who's touching it right now uh -huh. Oh, and she's phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's fantastic. Cheer, yeah. cheer. Oh, she's she's the gorgeous cheer, one on the cheer, ones and cheer, twos. Cheer, cheer, cheer. We've got none other than the building. <laughs> Bell the one, the only DJ oh Superstar. Oh. What up? We have live hand clap for Yay. Superstar. What up? Oh, man, what an intro. How you feeling? Shoot, I'm feeling great. <laughs> Good shit. Yeah, man. Look Thanks for having, having me. I'm glad to be here. This is what we do. Man, that's what's up. We like to salute. We like to give the flowers while people can smell hey, them. That shit is right. important. Hey, Absolutely. very, very important. Yeah. Very important. Yeah, yeah. Yes. while you can smell them. So thank you so much for gracing yes. our stage. Yes. And obviously, we want, for those that are tuned in right now, what up to Z Lee? I see you in the building. We got people that, <laughs> Chuck O, we see you. And we want to give these Facebook livers the full-fledged feeling of being around DJ Superstar. So we're going to okay. keep it live for the whole show where we normally only give y'all yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So oh, sit back, ooh. relax, enjoy the whole show tonight ooh. on Facebook. <laughs> we like, like I said, we like to do something a little bit special. Uh -huh. um, but Superstar, mm -hmm. take us on this journey for the people. Take us around the bend, around the bay. Take us back in time 
back to 2001 when you decided to put your hand. What's wrong, bro? First fell in love. First, okay, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Reem has a special. You know that's, that's yeah, you're you right. You're right. Thing. Take us you back take when you, you right when you first fell in love with with hip hop. <laughs> well, okay. So those are two separate questions, actually. They are. Mm-hmm. Okay. So which one first? Okay, okay. Real first talk. Okay, when, real when talk. When did you first fall in love okay, with hip hop? I am not gonna lie. This is gonna sound so weird, but the first. Well. Mm, I think the first time I fell in love with hip hop is when I memorized Mr. Mr. Scarface. Okay. Oh, she's so okay. gangster. I was like in the oh, seventh grade, that's eighth grade, right, though. seventh grade, seventh grade. You so gangster. Grade, yeah. Like that At school. least it was from a dope MC. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, people, man, I was so excited that I, you know, cool. it's cool. Yeah. He's a butthole. What? Yeah. Oh my you, God. No. Everyone yeah, so has that's, a cool story. Yeah. Yours so cool. I mean, I fell in love with hip hop. I would say when I learned that rap, I think. Who put you on? My friend Cedric Lilly on the bus. We were just rapping and I was like, man, I was like, ooh, let's just write down the songs. Ooh, g- give so us I was a like, taste of that again. I started small time, what, the rap? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. G- oh, g- no. give, give it to Let it. me see if I, yeah. I started small time, <laughs> dope game, cocaine, pushing mm. rocks on the block, I'm never broke, man. Mm. Uh. Sporting jewelry and the shit that came in rolling hard. Uh. You try to scoop me, you be served with no regards. Hey. Boy, don't teach me because I'm tired of teaching lessons. <laughs> so motherfuck you when that bullshit you're stressing. Uh. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> but it ain't nothing but the money flow in this oh, camp. And if you sharp me, you forever wear a Damn. So huh. watch your back and prepare for the hip man. Black for black. And no, I don't take no shit. And you be bucked up, fucked up. No trace on the for real of my nigga. Just call me Scarface. Hey! <laughs> I yeah, am that was so love first rap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And the fact that you still remember that. I still that remember it. Yeah. That was when we used to write down raps. I oh think, my God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you had a notebook, didn't you? I had a, no, I just wrote it on. What? I don't know. Brown paper bags. I think. Mm. Really? I think. I don't know. So no yeah. one found them bags, though, because that would have been not. in the seventh grade. Mm, yeah. If your mama yeah. found them, mm. somebody found them, mm. you was going to be in trouble. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. And then I remember getting, listening to NWA, but I couldn't, I felt so bad listening to it because I couldn't listen to like rap. I mean, cuss words and all that. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, it was, yeah. One of those moments. Yeah. Now, your question mm-hmm. was. Moving oh. forward. So. No, when did I. When did you decide to, to make be a that? DJ? Yeah. That's such a okay. So take us back in time. Okay, guys. So let's just you know bear with me. Let's just um hmm. Well, so real talk. I've actually always loved music, right? Okay. Um, you know, as a kid, I would make up beats on the Casio keyboard. Oh, I don't really? know, like weird nice. stuff. Like, and I played the violin. I played the clarinet, nice. and I used to Ooh, and, and the, and the uh, piano. Okay. So okay. I you really still read or no? Um, I can read a little bit, mm. so I could play the piano. Clarinet was like my favorite. That was like middle school, but I mm. really wish I would have stuck with playing the violin. Mm. Um, but so fast forward, so I've always liked music, you know, mm-hmm. learning raps, just whatever. Then when I got in high school, I was like a social kid. Like I threw my first party, like when I was sixteen. I used to charge people a dollar to come into the party. Oh, like nice. weird stuff like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so then you know. Know, that was you know that then you know went to college I finished college went to Prairie View got, got my degree from Prairie View but then it wasn't until after school it was like I was working at at and and then I just woke up one day and my roommates and I was like I think I want to go get some DJ equipment and mm, then really? um, it was weird we ended up walking to Guitar Center on West Timer I remember that spot <laughs> yeah right exactly there mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I went in mind. there and got these like little two turntables Funk Master Flex yes. little starter kit okay. and right. <laughs> went Flex back to the uh, apartment didn't know anything about setting anything up and me and my best friend set up the equipment red and white yeah. Easy. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then composite. the next day, uh my well boyfriend at the time, we went to um this record store on nineteen sixty, got two records, which was Shook Ones, oh. Mob D oh. Yeah, and Mantronics Shout Fresh, out fresh out is the Word. Which had nothing to do with anything. I just got those you two records. I was like, Ooh, <laughs> let me just pick them up. I ain't, you know. So took them back to the crib and started playing around. And then I just kind of got, you know, well, I had to buy records. Well, it was this place around the corner. It used to be Stereo Live. We ended up, um, it used to be like happy hour. 
and I used to go there all the time. Well, not all the time, but all the time. <laughs> and uh, go, uh, we used to go, hang out there for happy hour. Yeah. Uh, well, um, this dude, who is now is a well-known comedian, goes by the name of Ali, came downstairs mm-hmm. and was Ali. trying yeah. to holler at one of my friends, started talking to one of my friends. Basically, we started talking. I said, oh, yeah, I, I just started DJing. Then he was like, oh, well, yeah, my real good friend GT is looking for somebody to train. Well, then I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> well, then I said, okay, well, let me – oh, no. So then he said, well, uh, we have a record pool. Why don't you go ahead and join our record mm-hmm. pool? I was like, oh, shit, okay. So I'll, that was my way of getting records. Oh, are you playing that mob team? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so then I was, like, um, <laughs> I was like, okay, um, I, I ended up uh, joining the record pool. Well, uh, after I joined the record pool, that was when um, I would go up to the station every Saturday and kind of stand there and watch GT DJ. Mm. I did that for a while. Yeah. Then during that time, though, um, one of my old coworkers were was playing basketball at Fundy, which every summer they used to have the Nike Pro Am. Yeah. league basketball games and they were looking for a dj so he said hmm. so gt basically was like the way that you get in this is to take any and every gig just take it paid or none paid i was yeah. like oh, okay cool but that stuck it's still stick it's still with me to this yeah. day so um they were looking for a dj i said oh god okay that was like my first gig i thought oh that was like something so no, that is um, something yeah, wait yo well at the time yeah well yeah yeah it is something because that's how I got started. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started doing those basketball games. Then my real good friend had these poetry nights, and he was like, well, maybe you can rotate in and out. I was like, okay, yeah, Mm Pisano. So that was when I really started. So my husband at the time was doing poetry at Pisano's, and I was DJing the basketball games. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, I did that for a while, and that was my way of getting into the groove of things. I got pregnant, got married, and then my husband passed away. Mm, like in that, that order. Wow. It's okay. I can talk about it now. So in that order, that's the way it happened when I was just starting to get into the groove of things, mm-hmm. right? Well, right before he passed, um, St. John's downtown was looking for a different way to approach the youth. And at the time, Pastor DeVal Simmons was the youth minister. Mm-hmm. Well, right before uh, my husband passed away, he um, basically, I did this interview, and he was like, well, hey, you know, we're looking for a DJ. I was like, I don't know anything about gospel. At that time, I was just starting to DJ. Yeah. So I was like, oh, um, okay, cool. Well, um, oh, hold on, pause. I left out a good part. Go ahead. Because this is don't, time. Don't bring it don't back. Okay, so anything. what did I just say? Help me. Okay, so you, we're you on were the just story. saying how you oh, started oh, helping okay. out the youth. Okay, remember St. John's. Just remember yeah. that. Okay. okay, so let's, uh, like, maybe a, mm, three months prior to that, right? Uh-huh. No, maybe like a year prior to that, because before I had Zoe, my daughter. Well, when I was learning how to DJ, um, before I met GT, uh-huh. I, my old co-worker sold me some, uh, like a CD player or something. Then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know this is gonna be so crazy. Well, at the time, aggravated, <laughs> aggravated was DJ aggravated. You know, was um, you know, talking to one of my roommates, mm-hmm. and uh, basically, he saw that I was DJing, uh-huh. and I was like, "Hey, are you gonna train me?" And at the time, you know, it was no female DJs. Really, it was only one female DJ um, that was really from Houston, DJ EQ, and she moved away to pursue her own um, career. She moved to L.A. and made it, you know, big out there. Mm-hmm. But as at that time, it was really no was other there. female DJ. Yeah. So I, you know, made up my own hashtag, Houston's Preferred DJ. I just was like, okay, I'm just going to play around. I'm just going to play around with it. Well, I have a marketing right. degree. Ah! So un- subconsciously through all these yeah. years, I just marketed myself. Thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I like doing that. So um, anyway, so... Basically, aggravated turned me down and was like, you know, shame on you, aggravated. Yeah, like, like, I what if, but, now, but, but years <laughs> later, yeah, but years later, it was tough love. I mean, that's big brother for life yeah. because yeah. I patterned, I used to always look up to him, like, always look up to him, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a dope DJ, like, yeah. aggravated is my. 
my brother. Mm -hmm. So, um, but at the time, you know, women and females would try it, but wouldn't stick with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had to stick with it. That was when records, I mean, I carried records, like crates. Like, I still have my crates. Mm. I still have that that to the day. Authentic DJ. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. And so that's then, a good part. So then, uh, and then GT, help, yeah. mm-hmm. and then I will go to the station. Now back to St. John's. John's. Yeah. Right. Well, so after um, George passed away, um, all everything stopped, basically. My life kind of stopped, and I was like in a dark space. Yeah, very yeah. crazy. My daughter was just two years old, and I was like, dang, you know, what is my real purpose basically uh-huh. in life make you question because i was like what is going on so i had i didn't do i didn't start st john's right away um because i just needed that time and then through that i started like maybe like a month later right mm-hmm. and every sunday for 10 years i dj'd for the kids and what That's that dope. did what that did was during that time that was you know i was fighting through my pain and through that pain i found my purpose mm. so through mm. that mm. um like i would write i would have vi- i mean cuz i was like what is happening with my life why is this right. i didn't really want to be here i was like god damn you know yeah. i got this baby now i'm a single mama now i'm like how That's am i going to do this life yeah so i real. ended up life was real i ended up quitting my job at AT&T great benefits and everything Cause I just couldn't take it. You had to pursue and, your dream. Yeah. Well, no, not that. I was just stuck. Man. Oh no, yeah. no, it That's wasn't true. no dream at that point. Cause I was like, damn, what am I space. gonna do? Yeah. yeah. Cause I was like, damn, you expect to be with somebody for the rest of your life, raise a family, and then all of a sudden, it, gone. It, everything yeah. crashed. Yeah. So, um, I would. I went to St. John's every Sunday, and that was the way that I got through it. That was the way I grieved. The kids kept me going. And that was when I was like, well, damn, maybe my purpose is with kids. And when ah. aggravated would, but people would turn me down. Well, when, when, you know, people, I mean, first of all, being a DJ, a female DJ at that is very tough back then, right. especially because, you know, you get discredited, you know, no you don't takes, know, takes take you seriously, seriously yeah. you know, yeah. setting up sound equipment, all that. So in my head, I was like, shit, when I get to a point I'm going to open up a DJ school just for girls. Ah, that's the spin So Academy. that was when yes. I was like, okay, I'm going to open up a DJ school for the girls. Well, then time went by. I ended up, um, you know, doing the kids every mm-hmm. Sunday. And then that's when I was, like, asking serious questions to God, like, what am I supposed to be doing? And then after that, doors started opening like my first gig was DJing um, Solange was I DJ Jules, which is Solange little boy, third mm-hmm. three when he turned three, mm-hmm. I DJed his birthday party. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was the shit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you playing around that time for that for that three year old birthday party? I don't even know. I think I was playing some Disney something, and I kept gospel, but they wanted second. I mean, I don't know. I was at St. John's, and I was mm-hmm. like, shoot, I'm gonna play what I normally play. I just was like, dang. So. Um, and Kelly actually went to high school with me, but um, I was a little, oh, she, by the time I graduated, she already had left the school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was like, dang, you know, dang. Yeah. Um, and they started so young. But then anyway, um, after that, um, shit, after Solange, and I started DJing at Sax and Mac. And then from that, you just started just, getting them Well, calls. things started happening. No, no, it didn't you start getting like the that. Calls? No, it wasn't. It was a gradual process. That was mm-hmm. like 2006, six, seven. Mm-hmm. Then I started taking it seriously. I had to get a job to support my daughter, and then I said, "Well, okay, I'll just work towards that. Just play, you know, because this was just a hobby." Mm-hmm. And then I went to corporate America and um, worked through. Still DJing on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still rotating poetry lounge. And then taking any and every gig, you know, just kind of grinding it out. So that means that dopeness started right after that job, huh? Which job? (laughs) After (laughs) that uh, corporate America job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Way after. (laughs) Well, Well, this this portion of the show is sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside of their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. 
Shop dope gear at kogpassion.com. That's kogpassion.com. And use coupon code DOPE for 10% off exclusive Unleash Your Dopeness apparel. Act now because sizes are selling out fast. Get that dope gear. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to KG out there doing it. KOG Passion. Now, you know, you <laughs> your story is so intricate and detailed. Obviously, with trials and tribulations, mm-hmm. obviously you have those those times where you're at the bottom that allow you to appreciate the mountains, mm-hmm. right? The mountaintops, and you cultivate yourself around this music to where it becomes a part of you. Mm-hmm. So there's something we like to do here mm-hmm. on the show, and we like to know where you were when certain songs had come out. Ooh, this is going to be fun. Oh. So, yes. Oh, we're going to drop the first song for you. Oh, shit. And we want to know what was going on in your life <laughs> when this song came out. Are you ready? Okay. Oh, my God. Let this drop real quick. Oh, my God. Right, what, is <laughs> 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 what was I doing? <laughs> oh, my God. Shoot. I think I was... Actually, man, this was when Poetry Lounge was on it. Yeah. And I would play, yeah, this was with Bamboo, like. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember Bamboo. Yeah. So, yeah, that was during ATL time, like, mm-hmm. when that was popping. And, how, how, and, and where were you at? What were you doing during this time frame? Um, you remember? Well, actually, during that time, I was still figuring it out, because that was, what, like, 2006, seven, seven, Something like that. Eight, so you know, I was still fresh from. I'm shoot, it still took time, but I was still trying to figure it out. I was still cloudy. I was out there wilding out at that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, ain't nothing wrong with that. Shit, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Now, that's who, what it was. who here you think picked that song for the memory? Out of us three, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gotta be the ladies. You got to, cause I, I mean, yeah, Stilettos, of stilettos. course, yes. yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's hop over to our next track, okay, and okay. we want to see where you were on this uh, next track that we're going to kick out for Ooh. you. Let's let this build up real quick. Because <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> so sound like double old summer and say, oh, oh shit, man. Yeah. 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 That's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. That's the same. He was yeah. Yeah. One hit wonder, two hit wonder. Yeah, yeah two hit wonder. Really, 1.5. And the album actually was kind of interesting. It Production was. Wise, sonically. You got through <laughs> the album. I got through the album. Sonically, what? I was surprised. I ain't even. Uh, I don't think I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I decided to dive deeper. I couldn't get past oh, the video. Yeah, yeah, I would get into well, arguments true. with I mean, wifey and watch good, the video to cheer myself up. It was a good video. I kind of like the video. Trinidad James era. Let's see. That was like 2012. Yeah, early yeah, 2010. When was On the Run? When was the first On the Run? 2011. I think that was 11. No, I think that was 12. 12. I think it's 12. Yeah. So that time was like I think I was kind of at. Oh man, you know what? Hmm. I was just. I had just quit corporate America. Well, getting ready to quit corporate America, because. Um, I ended up doing a BET Master the Mix here, which I was the only person that really made it out of Houston. Oh. Mm. I was the only female that made it out of Houston. And uh, man, that's a crazy story in itself. But like I was working in corporate America, didn't really want to um, go to the tryouts because I was really, really scared to mm. go, really scared. And I ended up, um, uh, list I, that was the second time well actually the first time in my life that I heard this voice because you got to think about it like I was really trying to figure out myself really trying to whatever and mm-hmm. but at that time I was kind of getting over the hurdle and then I saw the BET uh, tryouts mm-hmm. I didn't go that day my friend called me and was like hey are you going I was like no I'm not going but mm-hmm. really I was just scared of shit Really? Mm. Sat there at the job, and then I really heard this voice. Like, I, I never, it was like, oh, you'll be stupid if you don't go try out. Oh. Yeah. Like, oh, you better go try out. I mean, it was like really clear. So I was like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I ended up going to uh, House of Darion, and I was the only female there. 
uh, was in line. All the DJs you can think of, any and every DJ you can think of, they was there. Even the ones from Austin. Mm. And um, shit, I'm going to say it. I'll never forget this. They asked me to come into the room the first round, and I made the first round. And then they they stood there. I stood there, and they were like, well, hey, can you do a Houston set? I was like, yeah, I can do a Houston set. I was like, okay, you know, I just played. I just did a Houston set. Well, then they was like, okay, well, we'll call you back. Well, then the next round, I guess, was the actual round that I didn't know that was actual taping. Um, I was in line behind a known DJ and I never will forget he was like oh superstar you uh oh damn you made it to the next round I was like oh yeah I guess he was like yeah you would because you got titties and ass and I was like oh that was I was like damn yeah oh you oh think about it I mean I could tell y'all some stories so I was like damn so I get up to the uh this like waiting area right and while we're waiting uh somebody knows me the producer and we standing there talking and drinking a red bull kid capri walks outside and that's I'm like, my dude what shout the? out to kid yeah so i was Legend. like what is going Word. on Legend. so pause two weeks prior to that in february i had dj that was when nba all-star i think was in dallas mm-hmm. and i did a party like or opened up a party and it was like hell that that weekend Mm -hmm. and kid always travels with his understudy well this one broke my turntable whoa i will never forget that shit and i was like like you gonna pay for it and so jimmy now his road man that we still cool i was like man you gotta at least give me something on it blah 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 and blah 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 you know so anyway back to the master of the mix well kick capri walks outside and he's like oh yo you ready you going you going next and he was talking to the dude my homie and so the dude was like i forgot his name he was like no i'm not no dj she's getting ready to dj and he was like oh shit this the only female we've had and I was like, yeah. And then I said, yeah, you probably don't remember me, but your understudy broke my turntable <laughs> uh. two months ago in Dallas. And he looked at me like, like what? And he was like, oh, sh- and you talking noise? Oh, well, so I guess this is about. So I was like, mm. what is happening? I didn't even know what was happening. I'm trying to talk fast. Well, I walk in to the house of Darion. They're like, don't look around. Look down. I was like, what is It's all dark. And I walked up and it was like the stage. And I was, they was like, so we have DJ Superstar. What you getting ready to do? I was like, man, I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> like, I'll never forget that. I was like, yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea. Like and they America's was like, got yeah, yeah, yes, oh. yes, the number oh, and everything. I was like, oh, the number. Shit. And I was like, whoa. I was, they was like, what are you going to do? I said, I have no idea. And at that moment, it was like, well, that's cool because you got a, a pretty smile. So I was like, okay, so. Kid Capri says, well, we want you to DJ for two minutes. Just rock out. I was like, what? Two minutes? Two minutes. <laughs> now, it's a clock like that. And I was looking like, <laughs> oh, shit. Now, in my head, and I was like, I was not even supposed to be here. Just so happened. Three days prior to that, I was practicing, and I did a mix. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to do that mix. I got him. I'm just going to do that. <laughs> I didn't even know. One in the bag. Yeah. Got so, yeah. so they was okay. like, what you going to do? I was like, I don't know, but I just remember that mix. And to this day, I remember I just went, start off Louisiana, get it ready. And then I went, back that ass up, vibrant thing. And I think at the time, moment for life. You and could, do, it. Was like you could do that right now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so um, I did that. And when that clock hit two minutes, I didn't care what it was. I was like, man, I just like overcame my fear because right, I yeah. wasn't supposed to be there. Now the adrenaline and so I was like, oh, yeah, I finally so did it. And then once I took that deep breath, these ninjas stood up and gave me a standing ovation. Oh, that was oh. the greatest. That, and at that moment, everything blacked out. And the only other time that happened was when my husband passed because I was like, what in the world just happened? Like, it, like, literally i went black Mm -hmm. that was the first time that i experienced like because i used to fast i was like oh why is this happening (laughs) i would smoke so much i still smoke weed but it was just so (laughs) it was just like oh come on like when i'm still like that today but that was the first time that i actually experienced listening to that voice and really going through it and then shit reaping the you know the benefits well got on the show then then from that like a couple of djs hated on me and you know which i'm used to it by now fast forward um got eliminated first round 
my computer froze on TV with just Blaze standing right there next to me. Uh, that was the craziest thing. And reality shit. show is really reality. We were on set like 17 hours that night, and I was we were hungry, computers on, you know, and everything. I'm like the Hollywood sign was on. I was I, we was like, what is happening? Like, sheesh, I'm tired. Get up there, turn the computer on. We had to DJ in front of a crowd. Smirnoff was sponsoring. They had yeah, the crowd. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. so I was, they was like, okay, Superstar, you up? And I was like, er, put my stuff on. Flatline. That had never happened before in my Whoa. life. And in TV time, that was long. That's a long, like, oh, yeah. seconds, that's, that's a, a long, long ass time. time. Just, they were like, come on, Superstar. Just Blaze was like, uh, she can't. By the time my computer came on, I was so frazzled. And I was like, shh. Yeah. Damn. I was like, damn. Got eliminated. I was sitting there crying. I never forget. Kid Capri walked by. Touch. I was like, damn. I didn't cry on TV though. Right. Kid Capri was like, um, he was like, what's wrong? I was like, damn. I just lost two hundred fifty. You know, in my head, I want to win two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> and then I was like, damn, I lost. And he was like, kid, your career is just starting. And I didn't understand mm. that until years later. Come on, mm. full but circle. Full Come circle. on, yeah. that's how it's supposed to be. So that's I want to kick. It so I want to so kick it with you for a minute. So, so yeah, oh, before you hop into that, but I, but <laughs> what you're talking oh, right. about? Oh, we got one more oh, song. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. that was just the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got one more. One more. Right. Yeah. We want to dive yeah. into last one. We want to uh -oh. know where you were when this shit dropped. Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> they, go, they go that long ass time. Long ass time. Oh, oh man. Time. Oh, man. It, there we go. Turn that up. Not again. Whew. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, man. I don't know where I was when I first heard this. You, when you first heard this back to back. Summer 16. <laughs> Whoa. Very <laughs> Talk about it. 16 was a kind of weird year for me. Mm. Yeah, it was a weird, yucky year. Like, well, not yucky. I had the school, um, Superstar Spin Academy was going. And that was my, you know, that's that was my first business. So when you have your first business, you, you learn a lot. You're trying to juggle everything. Absolutely. It's like, what is going on with that? Still DJing. Now, at this time, I am a full-time entrepreneur. Three years uh, full time because I quit my job 2013 and uh, so 16 I'm feeling it because you know sometimes people become entrepreneur they think it's easy and you know you have to it's a constant it's a constant pumping yourself up every day I still have to do it but 2016 was like really but it taught me a lot mm-hmm it taught me a whole lot. Valleys. And then, um, like, I would go get my chakras clear. <laughs> like, I have to, like, that was when I used to go get my chakras clear. Then I started hot yoga at the end of the, at, at, at the end of 2016. Mm -hmm. But by the time 2017 came, um, I had to end up closing the school. I was sad about it, but I had to make a decision because of, of different, I was like, it's just different things with mm -hmm. business. And I was like, damn. I put all my money, I put my 401k, it was like my money into oh. this, into this, in, in, into a dream, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, however, my money, I put really towards that space, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was like, damn, okay, whatever. Landlord shit, whatever. And I was DJing in Memphis and I never forget, I was like, all right, God, well, if this is meant to be, just give me an easy way out because I'm not going to go like, not like giving them eight thousand you know more yeah. money then they called back and said no no you owe this and i was like no i just gave you six thousand dollars i was like you know what scratch it canceled the check took my money back superstar spin academy is now non-profit soon as i closed the doors that was when the opportunity came for me to dj every day on the radio station mm -hmm. i was still dj on 937 but i was doing Mon uh, two days mm -hmm. well at that time soon as the soon as that closed i mean soon as i closed the school the opportunity came for me to dj every day on 93 i was like oh shit well okay that Come takes on. okay cool and then i started still doing my stuff you know still out there doing everything i never forget i sent the email to my because i think i was filling in saturdays and sundays when harvey came right before harvey came 
2017. Mm -hmm. That was, um, I sent an email and I was like, one of those emails, you know, you send something like, dang, where is this going? What yeah. am what is what am I doing here? Tell me what are your expectations for me? Yeah. I'm getting tired, you know, like uh all of that. He was like, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, we got something, just just hold tight. Harvey kinda put some um a wrench in it and then after that, that was when they started the R and B station and they wanted me to do the afternoons. Yeah. Nice. So twenty sixteen, that pain burst Come on. You better speak uh, that. The yep. radio, because yeah. that's the only now. thing mm -hmm. left that was left on my bucket. Well, I have one more thing on my bucket list. And a real talk, like, thank God. Like, this was all started from just playing around with my yeah. room. Like, just Sometimes getting equipment. That yeah. yeah, and I was like, okay, well, you know, there has never been a script. And I'm going to say it like this. And real talk, I really gave the blueprint for a lot. And, and, and I wanted to because there were no females here. Mm hmm period and it was like okay and at the time you know people was taking nobody was taking pictures like all mm. the models were but i was like oh let me go to dos titwell rest in peace, rest in dos peace dos. and i was like okay he was like dang i ain't never shot a dj i was like uh. i was like we just go do a photo shoot i'm you know playing around and then and now everybody got i mean yeah. every yeah. little thing so you know i never toot my horn I never do. You're going to toot it tonight, though. I'm going to do it a little bit tonight. Yeah, but right. yeah man. It's so, because yeah. of what you did. You talked about it. You sewed into a yeah. situation mm -hmm. young, mm -hmm. right? You sewed into it not understanding where it would take you, mm -hmm. but that, that initial marketing at that moment propelled you during yeah. that valley up into the mountaintop. And Ooh. we know a little something <laughs> about propelling <laughs> you to the mountaintop when it comes to sewing into your marketing. You better so, say it, boy. And you can do that. Tell them. Right here at the Sphere. Yes, sir. So, <laughs> This particular portion of the show is sponsored by us, folks. Are you starting your business or looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at thesphere.tv. That's what we do. So <laughs> y'all keep mentioning what, Post Lounge, right? No, we were talking about paisanos, and, and we oh, talked about bamboo. Yeah. Bamboo. And I mean, it's, it's nah, nah, nah. There was one more. It was something lounge. Did y'all name it? Oh, it's Poetry Lounge. Yeah, it's Poetry Lounge. Poetry lounge. It's yeah, we just, um, it's Poetry Lounge, but we would do it at different we, different clubs. Yeah. So my first experience was me finally getting the chance to go to this spot that I kept hearing about or whatever, whatever. And, um, you know, it's, it's a poetry spot, so, you know, everybody. They snapping and shit. Know what I mean? Do you step? <laughs> These dudes know they eat pork acting like they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, see, yeah. and you know what, though? You know what? That was so crazy because a lot of that, like, I used to think that, too. But, but you know what, though? Shout out shout out to that. Seven because it was the first yeah, time that I seen big, him. Yeah, my brother. That's my brother. Yeah, and, he was um, the other day. Oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. After like five songs, I was like, yo, who the fuck is the DJ? <laughs> and I started looking for the DJ and I seen this this beautiful girl and I was like, whoa, yo, this is dope. <laughs> and it was Shadow Bar. Yeah. Oh, Shadow Bar. Shadow now, Bar. Shadow Bar, that is the club that made me. <laughs> True, yeah. fact. About it. True fact. Yeah. Guess what? I took the last uh, Patron bottle. From the night, I still got it in my closet. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, that's that that club. Woo, so much this? has happened. You what? Remember what year that was when you were playing at Shadow Bar? That was probably about Shadow 12, Bar had a long ass 12, run. Maybe 13. Like, no, before then. Because my husband was alive. Mm. So that's how I gauge everything. I got you. Okay. So let's say shit. No, Shadow Bar was like 2004. Five, so, yeah, somewhere like between that. five and eight. Because that's was how it? I got started. Because, you know, 2001 is when I started. I was right. pregnant. And I would go DJ. 
Right. Well, no, 2003 I had. So, so 2003, four. Yeah. Because I was pre- 2004, three, five. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. That was a long time. Yeah. I envy all of y'all. Y'all be talking about all the cool spots in Man, East. man, all downtown. All I had was T-Town, Ooh. M-Bart. Hey, M- M- hey, M-Bar, M-Bar Milkshake. Milkshake Thursday. Shoot, Milkshake right. Thursday. The only place I've been. <laughs> man, that's, that was the shit. So that was the first time that I got to hear you spin, and I came oh. back just to hear you spin again like i had to put up through the you know through the you know the good and the bad poets but <laughs> i came back to hear you um Man. because my dad is a dj so you know i'm, I'm always attracted to that like yeah. if, if there's any element in hip-hop that i you know cling to mm-hmm. it's going to be the dj and the producer He's first and then the it's, it's, yeah, it'll be about the lyrics <laughs> um I then bumped into you, not knowing it was you at this point, at uh, the Continental. And I forgot what they were having. It was after the Pete Rock show. They was having something else. And we was in the back. And I remember you coming back there, and then you had left. And somebody I was with, I can't remember who it is. They was like, yo, you know that was DJ Superstar, right? And I was like, oh my God. what? <laughs> Girl, I'm like, yo, I, I just missed the opportunity to say, hey, hi, how you doing? I'm a fan, yada, yada. So, you know, when I heard that you was going to come on the show, I got dumb excited. Oh, and man. I almost canceled, but my wife was like, yo, <laughs> you know this is what you about. Oh, she was like, yo, man. put that to the side. I know that's important, too. That's, yeah, that's, that's wild man. important. <laughs> she was like, yo, but you got to go see this all the way yeah. through. So I'm happy to oh, finally get a chance that. to Shout out to you, really Melinda. Connect. Yeah, Melinda. <laughs> Wifey. Man, that's Wifey. so crazy, though, because sometimes, like, I was, I'll be out. I don't, I I feel like I have so much more, so much further to go. I'm still, to me, Zelma. <laughs> well, <laughs> I had a, what was 20, oh, 2016. Yeah, I had a stalker. Mm. Yeah, 2016, very interesting. Showed up to all your, all your spins? 2017. No. No, don't oh shout God. them I'm out. Even, no, I'm not shouting <laughs> that out. <laughs> oh, this was crazy. I don't even know. You had a real live story. situation? I had a real live stalker. Okay. Yeah. So you, look, how, man. How, how, what how that means, that? y'all, is oh when y'all God, out in the street, weird. y'all make sure y'all keep an extra eye on. on, man, on, on. Yeah. Oh my God! Don't worry, cause my fian. No, oh my God! Now my fiance. Now <laughs> this was a crazy ass story. Fuck it, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> love listen, story. Listen, I have. Oh, and I still am gonna do my diary of a superstar, cause Ooh. I wanna. Exp- uh, I started it. That's something I didn't complete, but man. I'm gonna tell it all. Probably under yeah, just I don't know 2019. But anyway, uh, <laughs> this person, well, was a poet. It was mm-hmm. so weird, and I'm a cool person with everybody. Like mm-hmm. I'm a hug you or hey, and that's just me. Yeah. Um, I don't do it now anymore, not unless mm-hmm. I feel it. But uh, this particular person, well, I show up to iHeart mm-hmm. one day, like to do something. I was just DJing and. The receptionist was like, superstar, somebody came up here looking for you, like, real frantic. And I was like, what do you mean? Frantic? Like, what? (laughs) And I was like, what do you mean? And um, they was like, well, shoot, uh, you, uh, they they said they was looking for you and that you knew them. I was like, I wasn't expecting nobody. Mm -hmm. And they was like, okay. And they said it was a girl. I was like, well, what do you mean? And And they was like, well, yeah, I don't know. I was like, well, how does she look? She was like. You know, she just had like you know dreads, and she had Timberlands. I was like Timberlands. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. She ain't got no Timberlands. damn Timberlands in Houston. Mm. Shout out to like, the best winter gear yeah, on the exactly. planet. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Kept going. And this particular time, I was DJing at the Alley Cat on Fridays. Mm. It's so weird. Like I always start off spots. Yeah. Mm. And then they blow. And then I go. Mm, I hear you. <laughs> it's You're so a crazy. That's what it's that cool. Is. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. So I, like that. I started. I was doing Fridays, and you know, whatever. I was just doing it, and then all of a sudden, I see this person walks up. You know, because they be at the poetry. I'm like, hey. It was like, hey, soup. You know, I came in to support you. I was like, cool. Turned around, got my drink, looked over. And Tim Timberland. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I freaked. And I'm real dramatic. So my fiance was there. Then my friends was there at the bar. Oh my God. I just, I froze. I was like, oh my God. I was like, so I tell my friend. I tell her what's going on. Then I tell Joe. It is. Oh, wait. It gets real. It gets crazy. I tell my fiance. So my fiance is real ignorant. And he was like, as he should. Yeah. So he was like, okay, I'm just going to sit there and, you know, mess with it. I was like, First of all, this oh. is so crazy. <laughs> what? So I'm looking, I'm just sitting there, I'm drinking my drink, and they sitting on the couch. 
and you know they're talking and whatever and i'm like this is so fucking crazy then she walks up to the table and says soup can i talk to you i was like hell no i was like you're freaking me out i was like you're freaking me out you can't just pop oh, up at my up job said that yeah I was, yeah because by this time i'm like you well put yeah, it together I'm, yeah south side come out i was like hmm. you're freaking me out i was like you're freaking me the fuck out i was like and you just can't pop up at my job like that that's when she knew that i knew that, that you it put was two her. and two together and he looked and then by this time one of the bouncers was like you gotta leave you gotta walk out well she walks out my fiance walks out behind her and they just stand outside. Well, look, I guess they go around the corner. You know how the breakfast club, you go yeah. around the corner to the side. And then apparently while I'm standing there, still in there DJing, she swings on my fiance. Whoa. Basically, yeah, the middle, right there on Main Street. It was like, you know, I just got to talk to her, you know, all this weird stuff. My fiance came back and was like, what is going on? Are you in some kind of relationship? I was like, what the? I don't even know what's happening. I'm just oh, cool with the girl from the poetry. God. She acts like she's walking out. She co- walks all the way around to the other end, to the other end come back around yeah. through that alley. Yeah, he yeah. Walks alley cat. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, soup. I just want to talk to you. By that time, I was like, hell, fuck no. The cops came around. They called the cops, and then she got. That's taken crazy. Down. So she never got to talk to you. No. Don't need to. No. So now I'm just kind of. I still talk to people, but it's just weird now because yeah. I'm like, oh, stalkers will fuck up your money. So, so we on your good side. Oh, yeah, y'all on my good side. Y'all on my good side now. Yeah, I'm not the hug. I, 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 I like, love my tens. If you can't tell where I'm from. You cool with the tins. Okay. You cool after that. Oh, my God. I don't want her catching a flashback like, no. I'll be like, no. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Yeah. So if hip hop didn't exist, what genre of music do you think you would be in, involved in? Um well to be honest with you, I uh this is another thing like when I'm in my car, uh I listen to 80s rock. Ah. Uh. Yeah. What's what's one of your favorite uh songs? Oh, Hall and Oates is my one of my favorite people. Oh, I'm clap for that. Yeah. yeah I'm a, I'm a classic Hall and Oates. I listen to Man, I listen to <laughs> I listen to <laughs> Hall and Oates. I listen to uh, Take On Me, Aha. Uh-huh. Like, mm. I do that to, I just do that. Like, I don't know. I just, and Robert Palmer. Like, I like you're, all you're, of the. You're explaining well, my, my guilty pleasure yeah. list on YouTube. Yeah. Because you I, I rock the videos. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a video kid. Yeah, wow. And then <laughs> I go to, like, Jamiroquai. Like, I don't know. Oh, I think I would just Love Jamiroquai. Jamiroquai. I don't know. I just do virtual insanity. But I think I would be probably a rock, a rock chick. Yeah, probably rock. Yeah. I think I would be probably rock, rock. I think, yeah. What about you, G? What, what, what genre of music you think you would be into if, if rap didn't exist? Neil, so. Oh, that was easy. Oh, that yeah. Was, oh, yeah. That's why I live. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm stuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck. On so the I'm, go. Sounds like I'm the only one that's gonna be struggling if rap didn't what, exist. What's your, what's your, yeah. Well. Uh, Okay. I, I would be reggae all day, mm-hmm. reggaeton, R and B, but I would really be stuck without rap. Seriously, mm. what about you? Well, you um, listen to everything. I listen to everything. So yeah, too. nah, nah, house music. Yeah, that's what I mean. House, salsa, merengue, reggae. Um, I could tolerate a reggaeton for a while. See, I like nineties yeah. um, rock and eighties rock, but I don't know if I would. Eighties rock. I don't know. But I think I'm gonna I'm go with G on this one because. You know, Neo has gone so far, um, you know, and, it, and it's really changed and, and evolved since, you know, Erica Badu with D'Angelo and oh, them yeah. to get the Masegos and the, and the Sminos and, the, Yo. you know, where we at now. Talk your so shit. let me pause oh, on Lord, that. Y'all go. Let me pause on that because Yo, if we don't pay shit. these bills, Yo. we ain't going to have what we have. We're rap. And we are very thankful to have these bills to pay. So, this portion of the show is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. Did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 million of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they don't have enough in savings. So don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow by becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email us at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask us how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshops near you 
Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. There it is. Shout out to my homegirls. They do it big. <laughs> so they do. I want to I want to want to dive deep. I know we're running out of time, but I want to get a, a true DJ's perspective on where we are today in hip hop. Based on what you've seen, the trends, the transitions, obviously I think we're finally ushering out of this mumble rap, oh, this yeah. very yeah. Uh, disconcerting or discon dis disassociated rap right where people just don't know what the fuck they're talking about to where <laughs> bars actually matter again i think we're, we're moving back into that trend how do you feel about that as you're spinning in these clubs as you're spinning on radio you know on terrestrial radio where do you see this trend at where's your what's your lens look like um to be honest with you i think uh i the only, I'm not going to say only, I like the, the trendy music, um, you know, a little bit to a certain extent. Um, I hate that is super influential now. My God. Wait I hate that is too instant right now. Like, everybody thinks that this, like, every like, we live in a society right now that, everybody thinks you're supposed to get it like right now mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like now and um um i think the because everybody starts somewhere you can't knock these kids for like starting a trend a trend is a trend it's mm -hmm. gonna go away yeah. will they still be here who knows but for right now i hate that it's, it's kind of hurt the culture a little bit but mm -hmm. then it kind of it's kind of cool too. Okay. Like I'm kind of in between. I feel you. Um, it's complicated. Yeah, it's not it's, simple. It's no, no, it's, it's not, not simple. Situation. Really complicated because yeah. I really like the Migos. <laughs> you know? Yo, too. I like the Migos, but I, I'm, I'm will I you. remember a Twenty One Savage song mm -hmm. six years later? No. no, I remember Migos. Mm -hmm. I think a uh, Cardi. I remember a Cardi B. Will I remember a rap? I don't know. I don't know if I re remember. You know. Now we don't have a lot of uh, longevity in hip hop. Mm. I think we just gotta go back. Yeah, it's oversaturated. I mean, they live for the moment, not for the purpose of what. Yeah, their career and a lot of people. Well, some people get into it for the. They think of the re re rewards and what rewards might be. Temporary. You know, it could be fame, or it could be money, mm -hmm. or yeah. it could just be. For the girls or for the dudes or whatnot, you know, do you really love it? Yeah. I think people get into it now. Some of them just to for the end result. They're not getting into getting it for into the journey. It, not of for the journey of love. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited, like for people like Toby. Oh my! Like yeah. uh, oh my. shit, he started at Poetry Lounge we every gotta. Sunday. Would do I his just raps. saw his interview with Master Pill. He was yeah, talking about that. I mean, yeah. he used to come every Sunday and stand there by me, and I would just be like, we shoot the shit and. <laughs> He stuck his gun. He stuck it out. Yeah. Now I mean, now I'm like, what the hell? You got Erica Badu talking about? Like, man, Tobe. So I think now with the change, like with, you know, I'm a Kendrick fan too, but I'm, I know, I I, I like J Cole too, but mm -hmm. yeah, but um, I see the change going. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an Anderson Pack fan. You better big speak time on over Oxford. here. You better oh. big time. Yo, we got a review coming in a few weeks with our Soul Food podcast. Oh, yeah, I we, love yeah. We'll Anderson make sure to tag Pack. you yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Anderson Pack, I listen to. I, I, I like. I think it's it's getting ready to change back, and okay. I hope we get some people that could stick. Well, we, we, he's definitely one of them. We got yeah. a question from Facebook from Chucko. Oh, he wants to know who was your favorite scratch DJ coming up. Oh wow! So Scratch DJ. Um, well, shit, gotta be well DJ Scratch. Mm. He was he was on the show, on well, Bastard the Mix. Oh, and I was so scared to see him. Like, oh, and he's still nasty me. right now. Yeah, and 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 actually, this is this is so crazy. So I have a real good friend in New York, DJ Male Star, and um, he's on tour. Like, he's runs with Jazzy Jeff. This Marquee and those people, and if you see him, you mm. know, if you're on the east and you see him, then you know, people know who he is. I mean, they don't know who he is, mm. but Mel Star can scratch his ass off. We was on Master the Mix together, okay. And um, but DJ Scratch, Dundada, 
Do you think um, the, the Oh footage- wait Scratch After scratch Okay <laughs> Oh scratch <laughs> After scratch Yeah DJ Coco Chanel Oh, she was so the only long. female. Yeah. So long. Yeah, yeah she in the, was in like, the, oh in the tri-state area in, yeah, in New York. Yeah, she is Her like the only. Ja- uh, Jazzy Joyce. Okay, so ja- okay, so Jazzy Joyce. Okay, oh. oh Shout out Jazzy stories, Joyce. Y'all. I love her. Oh, can I tell you a quick? How much time we got? You got a few. Okay, go I'm gonna ahead, try to go real, real quick. Quick story about Jazzy Joyce. This so right after my husband. So man, right after my husband passed away. That's your angel. This it is. Uh, at, right after that, we I went to New York to go visit my friend Alzo, and at the time, you know, Alzo was doing his thing. I think right for S, and just he's always eclectic. Anyway, uh, we ended up missing our flight coming back to Houston. All of my friends, so we drove back to his house. He was like, "Well, ca- caught a taxi." He was like, "Y'all hurry up because I gotta go somewhere, and we cannot be late." He was like, "Damn, okay." We rushed back to Brooklyn, um, get to his house, his pad. We left our stuff there, hopped the train, go to wherever this was. And I had just started DJing, you know, and then my mm. husband passed. So I was kind of in a real tricky, real sticky situation. Absolutely. But, you know, whatever. Um, get there. We're walking up. And then it's this lady walks by. She looks so fly. She's like, oh, y'all going up to the party? We was like, yeah, we're going up to the party. We were just talking. You know, I'm always talk. And she's like, yeah, my girl is DJing. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, I was like. Well, who? And she was like, Beverly Bond. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, now nobody, all my friends didn't know, but I knew because I'm, you know, starting to DJ and I tried to research like the female DJs and who was out there, EQ, you know. So I was like, oh my God, Beverly Bond. I was like, I'm just starting to DJ and I want to meet her. Yeah. She's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll take you up there. I was like, what? It's that what? easy. Hold up. So we walk in. Um, Alzo is taking pictures for. The very first Black Girls Rock. Wow. Mm. Oh. It wasn't televised. It was just a regular event. Like, you go here, here like yeah. a regular event. We walk up, we walk in, and, you know, you got people in there, the industry people, Alzo's taking pictures. And I'm like, what is this? Premiere is DJing up there. Uh, so I was like, moment. Nice. What is happening? So the uh, girl was like, oh, come on, we can just go up here and I'll meet you. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? <laughs> so we get up there and she introduced me to, um, I think I think I still have the picture. I'm going to show She introduced me to Beverly and uh, Premiere. And, uh, they was up there talking. I was like, what is happening? But at that moment, I was like, and I was listening because I'm still learning. I'm still, I was like, why are they playing Al Green or. Like, why are they playing this? Mm-hmm. And this ain't, like, why are they playing this at this time of the night? Like, it's, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? And I saw Vitamin Water. I saw, I think she had other sponsors. And I was like, damn. I had never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. Houston, we had never, you know, you, yeah. it's just now happening. Right. And I was like, Vitamin Water? <laughs> and, like, you know, then she's giving an award? And I was like, damn. And she was like, she gave the first award, the very first black girl's Rock Award she gave to was to Jazzy Joyce. Uh. And she honored MC Light. Uh. And they were all there. And I was like, what is happening? Look and what you didn't fell into. What I, so that opened my eyes mm. to, you know, sp- people, you know, getting sponsors. That opened my eyes like, well, damn, maybe you shouldn't turn up all the time. You know, I all of my wheels was turned. I was like, it has to be a reason while I'm here because at that time I was searching for answers. Right. Mm. And really, to be honest, like God would send me dream, like visions and dreams. I would be like, what is happening? Like I was just open. Sometimes I wish that would be like now because I'm I'm I've been stuck. To <laughs> but um, but yeah, I went to the very first Black Girls Rock. And Jesse Joyce was there, and yeah. I love That's when phenomenal. Coco Chanel says, I got you going crazy for Coco man, Cuts. Coco, man, she <laughs> that was her, she dope. is the bomb. So yeah. yeah. That's awesome, too. man. And talk Excellent a little bit about story. she got the juice. Okay, so. So that was earlier this year, and I'm so mad I missed it. That's so okay. Mad. Okay, so uh, one thing about a Sagittarius. Yes, my birthday was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy birthday! birthday. So, I'm right. just a big yeah. old family uh-huh. in November. You know what? Oh, woo! Moves yes. is crazy right now. Absolutely. That's crazy. That's why we are five days ago. Oh, yep. shoot. Ours was beginning of the month. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Back to back. <laughs> oh, my That's God. That's why the energy That's is why. so pure. It's, it's crazy. So yeah. awesome. so, I had to come out my jacket. Man, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So, so, look, part of, um, I don't know, I'm a real dreamer. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm just trying to really figure out what my next step is, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. I didn't, I kind of, 
um, been able and been grateful to do things that I've visioned. Mm -hmm. You know, I opened up a school with, in my head. Nobody had a DJ school. Then when I opened the school, then all these schools pop up. They took my curriculum. I'm like, damn, I, just different stuff dealing with it. And then DJing. Well, I'm like, well, damn, I'm not going to DJ till I'm over. I'm not going to DJ in the clubs till I'm over 45. But like, you what don't I look yes, it, baby. Yes, yeah, so I was like, damn. Am I, well, I'm like, well, am I, am I going to do it? Mm -hmm. um, and then with the radio, I was like, well, how am I going to use the platform of being on two stations and TV on Fox. So I was like, okay, you know, how can I do that? And um, what I came up with was She Got the Juice, which is just basically an umbrella that's going to serve um, for different entities under that. So I want to do different things. I'm, I'm not going to, I want to say it because one thing I've learned is to keep some things to yourself until yeah. you do. All right, that's what you do. Now the second, yes, but but the but the first two that I'm really gonna start working on super hard coming in 2019, mm -hmm. and what I kicked off a couple of weeks ago was that um, at the Shadow Bar during my birthday, I used to have all female shows. Mm. Nobody was really doing that either. Okay, and uh, I used to call up friends and I knew had female businesses. I had them mm. set up in the back of the shadow bar mm -hmm. and we just do an all female show. That is so dope. I remember, that. remember that? I remember that. Yeah, so I yeah, used yeah. To have, like Nate host. I used to have like just I had one of my friends one time body paint herself like I was always thinking kind of different <laughs> thinking ahead <laughs> like you know so um what I wanted to do is bring that back because we don't have a platform number one for females to show their art their music mm -hmm. so i was like i'm gonna go back i want to go back to things that make me feel so i was like okay i'm gonna start off with my showcases and i wanted to have the uh, the the next one during my birthday but i'm realizing that i don't want to rush i'm impatient i want to do it right and being at my birthday and i'm still djing then the radio then i yeah. all that so i was like let me just regroup so the beginning of the year january 20th um let me rewind i'm sorry y'all i ramble she got the juice is basically to inspire and motivate through music and storytelling. Okay. So music and storytelling um, goes in, you know, mm -hmm. simultaneously because I have a story to tell. <coughs> a lot of yes. people now don't know. People know DJ Superstar, but if you didn't know me before mm. radio, yeah. you mm -hmm. don't know my story. Yeah. Right. I'm not where I am. Um, in my head, as far as my pinnacle of success, mm. I'm stuck. So I want to know how the people that have made it, when they got to that, how did they get yeah. to it? So my storytelling series is going to kick it off with, you know, a couple of women in the city. You know, I'm going to keep it local, and then I want to find somebody that will come and kind of encourage uh, us to you know get to that next step so mm -hmm. i'm gonna start my storytelling series interview put it on the radio put it on the podcast yeah. you know, utilize all of my avenues yeah we can help you do that yeah so yeah. it'll be the music my showcases along with my storytelling i love Come it on. so january 20th mlk weekend save Ooh. the date sunday we'll yes. talk about that so i got that's two i got two corny questions that's okay you can ask them i'm going okay, ball cool. so <laughs> My first one is, will you follow me on Instagram? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was funny. I'm going super <laughs> corny. That was smooth. It was a little corny. Uh, was appreciate you. I'm going to do that. Appreciate you tell we the corny bunch. Yeah. Listen. You got photos. I'm going to I'm shoot, I'm a shoot my shot while I got it. Really? Oh, my God. That's <laughs> funny. Clock's winding what's, down, what's baby. What's number two, then? What what's number two? two? Oh, my God. Shit. What is your top five dead or alive? God damn it. That was his question. He know how. And that's all right. No, it's fine. It's the last question Yours on the show. Yours is how you fell it's in love with hip hop, and famous. his is the top five. Oh, my bad. Top, 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 top five, top five, top five, top five. Top five. Last question we'll of the do night. We'll better next year. Top five, dead or alive, your choice. No, any era this you want. This is so, move me on and my fiance. Come this on. This is so hard. And understand it, it changes. We're about, it, to, oh we're about to make y'all a house divided. Come on. Welcome to my world. Oh, we go into it. What you uh, got? Okay. I have to well, adjust my um, shift for this oh, one. Oh, oh, this is so hard because, okay, so five. Wait, let me write. I no order. Write down. <laughs> there have been any uh, order. Okay. Well, to be honest with you, like I've slept outside for outcast tickets. Like I'm a, un like I'm an outcast. Like 
fan. Yeah. But see, you can't like a duo. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. where we yeah. argue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. He like, says Andre 3K. Because we argue, but I like them together. So yeah. would that be, you know? But anyway, shoot. Of course, I'm going to say Outcast is one. Okay. Of course, UGK. See? Oh, that's one. That's not that's the duo. One. Got it. Okay. Um, it's no order, right? It's nope. Not no order. order. Yeah. Outcast, UGK, Scarface, mm. Nas, mm. and of course, Jay Z. Now, we didn't talk about my Jay Z story. That's the story. We got to say that. We're going to say, we we're going to, we're going to save that. that Maybe for our when, Patreon exclusive. Yeah, we'll do a we sit down we conversation. We didn't go through, oh, we didn't that. go all the that way be in thinking. Mm-hmm. That on, be the, um, <laughs> on the Trinidad James yeah. song. We didn't go, I didn't go we, back into that story. That was the story I was going to go into. I think I veered into something. See, we got some other stuff for y'all. For those that are tuned in right now, y'all sitting at home, y'all watching this shit on YouTube. You're in your car right now. You're listening to this on Spotify. We got hotness in the fucking Bad. building with DJ Superstar. Yeah. Right. Or, or if you're on the website watching it. Come oh, on. If you're on the website. www.thesphere.com. Dot TV. Backslash. Shit, he on some other shit. Right, right. We I got it. it. It's we all in good. Backslash. We're, we're in there. But DJ oh, Superstar. Yeah. Thank you so much oh, for no blessing problem. us for our respect to DJ Series. Yeah, we no truly appreciate Live hand bro. clap again for yeah. DJ Superstar. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. that shit. Thank you. Please, for anybody that's tuned in right now, let them know where they can reach you, follow you, listen to you, see you, hear you spin weekly. Yee. Where the fuck can they get with you at? Okay, at I am DJ Superstar on Instagram. Okay, since that's the popping thing. And Twitter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Facebook at DJ Superstar. Okay. You know, if you Google DJ Superstar, S U P A. Not P E R. Spell that name right. Super, it's S U P A S T A R, and I should pop up. Now, you can listen to me Monday through Friday on the all new 1045 Kiss FM, which is the home of the Steve Harvey Morning Show from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Hey. My lunch, well, my throwback mix is on 93.7 The Beat at noon. Then you can catch me on Mondays with Isaiah Carey, Fox 26, uh, uh, Uncensored. There it I is. love it. Yeah. Love Every it. now and then on great day, I think that's gonna start something next year too. Okay. So we'll see. Grow, all right. grow, stay busy, stay I love busy. This prosperity, <laughs> tenacity. Man, she's got it, it all. Oh my God. Dexterity. <laughs> Man, keep this shit going. Yeah, she's got it. It's miraculous. Oh my God. Oh my God. On the oh ones Lord. and twos. Well, Hold thank up. you again. We yeah, truly, I appreciate truly appreciate it. you. I had you, a great dear. time. Thank you. Good deal. Good deal. Layla E, where can the good people reach you at, my dear? Well, you can catch me on uh, what did you say? Instagram. Instagram. You can find me at Layla underscore. E1 as well as that Snapchat. Snap and don't forget to chat. join um, the Facebook group, Layla underscore E. Give me, p- I've, I've actually had some people hit up my inbox with some music. Um, make sure it's a finished product too, just in case I do actually want to play it. I, 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 I am. I'm sorry. Nah, she's, you know, no. professionalism. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, and I'd like to um, give a shout out to everybody who watches us faithfully on Facebook Live as well as actually goes to the website and listens to everything that we do i appreciate you we appreciate you mm-hmm. what about you ring yo um before i close out i gotta give a live shout out to my boy my brother chucko thank you for Chuck taking me go. to the um monday night football game I texas game that. i'm jealous seats were crazy night. dope they, they was just perfect monday right right in the spot football. yeah man that was real dope and he took me to ncaa finals uh last year chucko I can i be your friend too add me on instagram <laughs> That's funny as shit. That's <laughs> <laughs> how we roll, man. So I I I I I, I, I owe him yeah. lunch at least. So, um Instagram is Kareem dot Sean S H O N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sh- you should get the oh, t- tapping on that. Yeah. Um <laughs> He's so serious right now. Uh Twitter is at Reem Boom Bap. Holla at me a holla back. Yo, also shout out King Tut. He was supposed to come and hang out with us this evening. Um, we'll definitely make time to get together and, and, and holler at each other. So, uh, G. That's what's up, man. And, of course, you can find me anywhere online. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Bumble, Tinder, Pornhub.com, at G Hawkins. <laughs> That's G Hawkins with the Z. You need to hit us up here at the show. Shoot us that fucking email. Boom, bap, at thesphere.tv. Across any social media platform, at the Sphere TV. Use our coveted hashtag, that boom, bap, and we will definitely get with you. And if we don't say shit else to you, Cheer. remember this. Rap. Minus. Lies. Equals. Hip-hop. hip-hop. And that's, that's that, that boom, bap. bap. We'll see y'all next hey. time, folks. Shit, shit, shit.